Birth rates and full moons, one of my favorites. There are a couple of municipalities where the birth rates jump a little during the full moon, and everyone says, oh, it's the gravity of the full moon yanking the baby from the womb, you know? And I'm thinking, maybe there's another explanation. So if you, if you look at the gestation period of the human female, it's basically about 295 days. Not from the date of missed period, but from when you actually got pregnant. That's the number that matters here, okay? 295 days. Hmm, how long is the average cycle between consecutive full moons? 29 and a half days. So, take 29 and a half days, multiply by 10, you get 295 days. So if your child was born under a full moon, that just simply meant you got knocked up under a full moon. That's what that meant, okay? And no one argues the romantic effects of a moonlit night, okay? What about behavior? I told you this was brain droppings. I warned you in advance. Behavior and full moons. This one is classic. People say, oh, they acted crazy. It must, the moon pulls the tides. The tides are made of water. The human body is mostly water. The moon must affect the human body until you actually do the math. And when you do the math, you could ask the question, well, what is the tidal force of the moon on your cranium? How about that calculation? You could do that calculation. The tidal force of the moon on your cranium. Because if that were severe, it could, be, it could be messing with you, right? All right, so you do the calculation. It turns out if you're one of these people who sleep with like a lot of pillows and one of the pillows is kind of leaning on your head overnight, the pressure from that pillow on your head is a trillion times greater than the tidal force of the moon across your cranium. But nobody talks about the effects of down pillows on your behavior the next day. Why not? If you would like more information about the amazing meeting, visit amazingmeeting.com.